Hello and welcome to Gardening in 58 North. So in this video I'd like to show you how to make a plant and leave zero maintenance vegetable garden. So I actually planted one here last year and you can probably see the results. There's very little weeds coming up. Basically this whole site last year was like this section on the left. It was full of grass and weeds. All I did was cover it with cardboard, then cover it with mulch and it's killed off 99% of the weeds. Nothing really came through. These weeds that have grown since have just really grown over winter because we have quite mild winters here in Scotland. But I need to harvest this. There's lots of potatoes under here and there's also lots of juice and artichokes that I need to harvest. So I'll show you a quick clip now, show you what it was like before. So you me uh, clearing it as well. So this is the sort of clip of me clearing the site last year. So I wanted to keep the maintenance and the actual effort to make this vegetable plot down to an absolute minimum. So in order to do that, I got out my strimmer and my lawn mower and I just cut back all the weeds down to the ground level and then went over it with my lawn mower and went on across it at the second lowest setting. That made sure all the foliage was cut down nice and short and it made it a lot easier for me then to lay out the cardboard on top of the ground, which will then smother out any weeds that do try and regrow. So this method of vegetable garden is very low maintenance and it's quite easy to set up as well. There's basically no digging involved. The minimum that you need to do really is cut back some grass or any shrub down to the ground level, cover it in a thick layer of cardboard, then cover that cardboard in mulch to make sure it's weighed down and doesn't get blown away. That will kill off any of the weeds. And then what you can do is plant by cutting holes in the cardboard and as long as you've got the right combination of plants, there's going to be no maintenance. So the best way of doing this is to grow plants that grow well together. You want really a, a ground cover plant to smother any weeds that do try and come through, although you'll have very few weeds growing if you've got the right kind of mulch. And you also want to have a nice tall plant which doesn't uh, shade out the, the other one, but grows tall and has a different root system so the two don't compete with each other. So what I did last year is I had two root vegetables. Ideally you would have one root vegetable, one surface vegetable. So for example, I had these Jerusalem artichokes here, which grow very tall. Now I only planted this up in the middle of summer, so I didn't have the uh, very high yield, but if you do this at the right time of year, so to spring, which I'm doing this year at the right time, you should be able to get quite high yields using this method. So this is the, uh, the tall Jerusalem artichoke. This grows tubers at the, at the ground level. You can see one down here. Jerusalem artichoke is probably one of the easiest plants to grow. It's quite invasive though, so where you do plant it, it might be hard to get rid of if you leave any other tubers remaining. It's a great plant, no maintenance required. It grows taller and more vigorous than most weeds. In fact, I actually planted some over here where I didn't put any mulch down in the grass, and these grew quite tall considering we didn't have long in the growing season. But they still grow about two, three meters in height normally. So you want some nice tall plants like this. And then ground cover, last year I had potatoes. I'll do potatoes again this year. Just because I'm in Scotland, my climate doesn't really facilitate growing of other crops. So I need to have cold tolerant crops, but if you were to grow in a warmer environment a perfect combination would be something like sweet corn and sweet potato. Another combination that might work well is somewhere like this is if you had a root vegetable such as Jerusalem artichoke here. You could then cover the ground with something like a pumpkin. So the pumpkin would sprawl over the surface, have shallow roots, leave space for the root tubers to develop because the pumpkin won't have many large roots. And the pumpkin would work well because it would completely smother the site, kill off any of the weeds, stay low enough that it doesn't interfere with the taller crops and you just get a nice harvest at the end of the year. So if you're doing it really low maintenance, you want to choose crops that harvest at the end of the year and the and the crop will last for many months without any maintenance. So for example, I use potatoes and Jerusalem artichokes because as long as it's winter time, these can stay in the ground for several months, up to six months, and um, they won't be growing and they won't go off. So these, for example, these finished growing probably September, October last autumn. It's now the middle of March and these are still perfectly fine for eating. Same with the potatoes in here. A couple of them were disturbed by some animals, probably a fox or something, but the ones underground will be perfectly fine for eating now. You don't want to use a crop that needs regular maintenance or picking, such as runner beans or lettuce. If you do use those crops, you, it still works perfectly well, this method, but just bear in mind you need to constantly harvest throughout the season and it's not just leave alone and harvest at the end of the season kind of thing. The idea of this is you plant it in spring, you leave it until the autumn and then you just harvest any time between autumn and next spring as and when you need it. So I'm going to set it up again this year. Um, I'm going to make a few slight differences to last year. Last year I only had small bits of card and as I was laying it some strong wind came and it made it very difficult to lay. I couldn't film it basically and the wind started blowing the, the, the small bits of card everywhere so that wasn't filmed but what I'm doing this year is I've got large card. The bigger the cardboard the better. The reason being one it doesn't blow away as easily in the wind when you're setting it up but two there's less cracks and there's less gaps in between you want to have all the cardboard overlapped and you want quite a thick layer of cardboard otherwise you will get weeds coming through 
This will kill off most weeds, it will kill off any annual weeds and most grasses, but if you have any strong perennials, they might still come through. So you can see here, we got some dandelions. They probably pushed through last year. And we also have some dock as well. So I'll be trying to remove them by hand, but any other weeds, thick layer of cardboard and mulch will kill them off, no problem. So what I'm going to do now is rake back the, the mulch because I'm going to reuse it. I'm also going to add some new mulch and I'll be harvesting all the potatoes and the Jerusalem artichokes ready for planting. So that's all the mulch now raked back and all the potatoes harvested. As you can see the yield was actually quite good even though I planted these very late in the season and uh, the yield would be even better if I planted this at the correct time of year. Now potato wise these potatoes are absolutely huge. Um, my hands aren't very good for scale because I'm uh, six foot five but um, those potatoes are really big. The only problem was last winter it was much colder than normal, so we got minus 15, normally it's only about minus 5 in this part of Scotland. So the frost did kill um, any of the sides that were towards the surface. So all of these are half frostbitten, so unfortunately not much use to them. But the um, Jerusalem artichokes did well, you can see quite large tubers. So I'll be replanting all these Jerusalem artichokes. I've actually got another type of potato this year, so I'm putting in seed potatoes uh, from a different variety called Cara see how they do. I just like trying different varieties, see which one works best in my area. And looking at the soil itself, what I did last year is I put down bloodfish and bone for feed. I put down compost to improve the soil and also some manure. Now the soil under here is absolutely horrendous. This used to be a shed uh, years ago, so it's just full of like hardcore and stones. So you can see here, underneath the mulch is actually a really nice layer of uh, like compost and topsoil. This has been worked out with the worms and it's now really nice. All the cardboard has completely rotted as well. There's one or two tiny little scraps of cardboard but generally all the cardboard is gone. But if I lift this up you'll see underneath this soil is really horrendous. It's just loads of stones and gravel. Um, so the soil itself is really poor but if you get enough compost and uh, mulch you can get good results. Part of the reason is because you've got the mulch there's no other weeds in the way. Your plants aren't going to be out competed by weeds or anything. Also we actually had a drought last summer and although there was very little water and I didn't give this any additional watering because it had a thick layer of mulch that kept the moisture in the soil and the potatoes did well. The potatoes are a plant which would normally suffer quite badly if you don't give them enough water during a dry summer. So what I'm going to do is now cover this with cardboard. I'm going to also cover that little section that I didn't cover before. Now, unfortunately, this pile over here is uh, slightly higher, but it's actually just a pile of rubbish. Um, under here, there's just loads of stones and other things, so I would like to rake it out. But for now, as I'm just doing like an easy no maintenance garden, I'm just going to cover that as well and grow on top of that. And actually, last year, some of my best potatoes were there, probably because it was higher up, it was slightly warmer. The biggest limiting factor here in Scotland is temperature. So before you put down your cardboard layer, you want to get different layers, and uh, underneath the cardboard layer, if you can, you don't have to. The bare minimum basically is cardboard and then something on top to keep the cardboard from blowing away. But for best results, you should put a layer of compost and manure or some kind of feed underneath the cardboard to enrich the soil. Because vegetable plants are very hungry plants. They're going to absorb a lot of nutrients throughout the season. They need a good amount of feed. So putting that down underneath the cardboard keeps it away from the weeds and it allows the plants to get it. So I'm going to be putting down a bit in here. I put down a lot of compost last year so I don't need any more compost. Also I've left some of the oldest mulch on the, on the surface so it's, it's quite rich now. So I'm putting on a bit of the old mulch as a form of compost and also some blood fish and bone which is just like a concentrated feed. And then what I'll be doing is putting on cardboard and then a layer of mulch on top of that. So what you'll be seeing now is the time lapse of me getting the ground prepared. First of all, I'm going to put down a layer of wood ash. This will increase the alkalinity of the soil. My soil is quite acidic, so it needs that. And also it adds a lot of potassium and a little bit of phosphorus as well. And then I'm going to put down some blood fish and bone, which is that kind of more beige color powder. That's going to add some of all the essential nutrients and that will be slow release. So it will help for the entire duration of the growing season. Next, I'm going to be spreading out the compost, make sure there's a nice layer of growing medium that the plants can get the roots into. And then finally, I'm going to go over the top with the cardboard and cover the whole area with cardboard. Now, it's quite important that you overlap any areas that have any gaps. And if you are putting two bits together, do overlap them. Otherwise, the plants can push through and try and get as, as thick a layer as possible. The thicker the layer of cardboard, the less likely it is that any weeds will be able to grow through there. And don't worry about it rotting down. Most cardboard should rot away within one year as the worms and microbes feed on it. So with the cardboard, you want to make sure you remove any sellotape first and also try and avoid any heavily printed or glossy cardboard. 
So now it comes time to planting. Now it's important that I plant underneath the cardboard layer. The mulch on the top, the idea is to keep the weeds down, keep the moisture in, and to make sure the cardboard doesn't blow away. The mulch on the top isn't, ide isn't there for growing plants in, so you have to plant underneath. So what you need to do is cut a hole in the cardboard. Now wherever you do cut a hole for the cardboard, make sure that you leave some kind of flaps behind so that when you put the cardboard back, it can be placed nicely around the plant. So for example, I often just do a large X. That will allow the potatoes or the whatever other plants I'm putting in to grow through. I'll peel this back, plant the potato, gently put this back on, but not hard. The potato can then push through that. This works with anything with large tubers, anything that has a lot of energy that can then push through. If you're not using a plant with large tubers and you're planting an actual plant, I wouldn't do anything from seed in this uh, type of low maintenance garden because it probably won't survive. But if you're in, doing any young plants, I would, um, do the same and then just slowly and very carefully fold the, the cross around the stem. You might need to just cut out a little bit from the middle here just to allow the stem to still come through from the X, but that's generally what you want to do. Obviously be careful if you're using a knife, but I find standing knives are the easiest way to do it. I've tried with scissors. Scissors don't seem to work so well with cardboard. That's basically what you need to do and then you can cover it with mulch. If you plant on top of the mulch, to say the plants won't do so well. The mulch I'm using, it's a standard garden mulch. It's not the best because uh, we can eventually start growing in here. Ideally you would want to do something like wood chips. Wood chips would work very well. And now because you've got so much carbon in the, on the surface of the soil, so it's the cardboard and the wood chips, when you do put a, a feed into the soil, make sure it's a, an organic slow release feed, but one that's quite high in nitrogen because as the, the organisms brought down the cardboard, they take a lot of the nitrogen from the soil to help break down the cardboard. So you need to make sure you've got plenty of slow release nitrogen in the soil. The reason I say organic is because it's slow release, it'll last the whole season. You don't want to be going back and topping up the feed because then it kind of gets rid of the point of having a low maintenance vegetable plot. So this next time lapse is quite a long one. This is me basically just getting it all planted up. You'll notice I'll be using the, the X method for uh, making a hole in the cardboard. If you just cut a square hole in the cardboard, the problem with that is if there are any weed right next to where you plant the potato, there's more likely that they'll grow through, whereas with the X it's quite well covered. It's one of the things you want to watch when planting out with potatoes particularly or any kind of tubers that are near the surface, is work from one side and then go back to the other. You don't want to really be standing where you're where you've just planted. If you stand up the potato you might crack it or damage it and then rot might set in. So if you can try and work backwards from where you've been working and just to try not to stand on any other section of the way you know you've planted potatoes or any other kind of tuber. And then you'll see me at the end of the time lapse I'll put the old mulch on first because that mulch has started to decompose slightly it's more likely that weeds might start to grow and then I'll put some fresh mulch on the surface make sure it's a nice thick layer. The mulch is really essential when using the cardboard because without the mulch it doesn't hold the cardboard down and if the cardboard isn't held down it could always blow away or if weeds try and push up from underneath what they'll do is they'll lift up the entire cardboard and the other thing is if you don't have the mulch the cardboard tends to dry out very quickly and then it just creates this kind of hard layer on the surface it just doesn't look nice so it's always good to mulch you can in theory use things like gravel and inorganic mulches but i would normally recommend something like wood chips because it's biodegradable and it'll actually enrich the soil over time So that's the plot now all fully planted up. It's pretty much zero maintenance from now on. If you do live in a very dry climate or your soil is very dry, you might want to give it a good soak now. But with all that organic matter from the mulch and the cardboard, it's going to soak up a lot of water. So once the soil does get damp, you shouldn't need any more watering after that. So I'm just going to completely leave it now, not walking it at all. And then at the end of the summer, I can harvest all the potatoes and all the Jerusalem artichokes. Now the potatoes in my climate, they tend to grow most of the summer, but if they get hit by blight, or if it's an earlier variety, they tend to die down around August time. If that looks like likely to happen, what I'll probably do is I'll probably plant a pumpkin in July, and then that can come in and smother the rest of the ground as the potatoes die back. 
So here are a few photos from throughout the year. You'll notice the growth is quite slow at the beginning of the year because it's quite cold here in Scotland, but then it really takes off and does well. And there's also a photo right at the end of the year just to show you how few weeds are left. All I've done is cut back the top growth. The roots are still underground, ready to be harvesting for the tubers of the potatoes and the Jerusalem artichokes. But because the foliage from the potatoes and the Jerusalem artichokes have covered the whole of the mulch for most of the summer, there hasn't been any weeds that have come up and grown, so it's managed to remain weed-free for the whole season.